Today's daily number is 20%. 20% is the amount home prices are expected to rise in 2022. All right. Welcome to the Finance Rubble Show. I'm Kamari Ellis. I'm a tax accountant. I solve tax problems all day long. I'm also a former portfolio manager and a recovering financial advisor. So this channel, all about money. We talk about taxes, stocks, business, economics. If it's about money, we talk about it, all right? So in today's show, we're going to talk about a couple of things. It's going to be kind of a short, abbreviated version. Only going to cover one, kind of one-ish stories, right? But we're going to cover our market rundown. We're going to keep covering Russia and Ukraine crisis. And we're going to talk about black families. Why are black families struggling to get home? So that's what we're going to talk about today. But as we get into it, let's jump into our market rundown real quick and see what's going on in these markets. Um, if you're like me and you've been paying attention to what's been going on, you know it's kind of rough out there in these streets <laughs> and these in these financial streets. So I'm not expecting a whole lot of change. All right. Now, the S&P 500 closed today at 4201, 4201. And that screen does not look good at all. Let's try that again. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, give me one second, folks. This is part of the problem when you go live. Any technical issues could abound, but the question is, can you come back from them? All right, there we go. So the S&P 500, the S&P 500 is the 500 largest U.S. companies that are traded on the stock market. That closed at $4,201 today. So the market's being effect, impacted by Russia and Ukraine, everything that's going on over there. The market is down 11.85. Might as well round it up to 12%. Market's down 12%. And the S&P 500 is a good measure of how the overall stock market is doing. And it's also a good measure of how the overall economy is doing. That's why they created these whole uh, Dow Jones, S&P 500, Russell 2000 um, uh, benchmarks or less, just to judge, again, how well, the markets are doing how well economics are doing, okay? Crude oil. Now, if any of you have been following my Instagram, I talked about crude earlier. Crude actually was up to $130 per barrel. It backed down a little bit, but it's still at 121-ish, almost, yeah, 120.94. It's crazy. Crude is up about 60% year to date. So, again, Russia, Ukraine. Like, everything is fueled by Russia, Ukraine, and it's it's crazy. Now, Gold. Gold actually broke through 2,000, 2,000 uh, ounces per troy ounce, rather. It was $2,000 per troy ounce. About back down a little bit, right? 1996.90 or spot 90, as they say on the market. Still could round up to $2,000. So it's still up there. It's still going strong. And I don't know if anybody's been paying attention, right? Just going back to oil, gasoline prices through the roof. Uh, last time I looked at the AAA national gas national gas average, it was at four dollars, four dollars even. Now in California, it was as high as, and this is for, this is for what is it, eighty seven unleaded eighty seven regular. It was as high as like five dollars and fifty cents in California the last time I looked. So everything's going to keep going up. Everything's going to keep growing higher and higher. Sadly. So expect that to keep going. It's it's going to be an issue. It's going to be an issue. Now, as we get into as we get into what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, let's look at it, right? Russia's still bombing citizens. UPS stops flying cargo planes over Russia. Biden still hasn't made up his mind about banning Russian oil imports. That kind of boggles my mind, but I get it. It's political. It's political, right? Russia is starting to recruit Syrians for urban guerrilla warfare. That's a little seedy, but all of this is seedy though, right? Uh, Visa and MasterCard are suspending operations in Russia. McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Yum! Brands are still doing business in Russia, even though there's many political elected officials who are asking them to stop. They still haven't made up their mind yet. All right. And Ceasefire talks are still underway in Belarus between Russia and Ukraine. This is the third time they've done it, but they still have not really come to any 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 
I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but they haven't come to a resolution, right? Even though I, I stumble over this a lot of times because in my mind, I still have a hard time going through this. Like it's 2022 and we're still going to war over petty things, but that that's, that's just me. Um, I don't know how you all feel, but to me, it's like a travesty. It's a travesty. All right, but going into the main topic of today, going into the main topic of today, this is a piece on CNN, CNN Business. All right, it says home prices could soar another 20% this year, but black families are struggling to benefit. Now, it, it seems like black families are in vogue these days. Everybody wants to talk about black families. It's a cool thing, but okay, let's have at it. Now, this is an opinion piece by Nicole Bouchard. Uh, she is a chief, the chief economist over at Zillow. And if you remember Zillow, Zillow had some problems not too long ago because they were doing some kind of weird things in the marketplace. But we'll talk about that at another time. All right. So and this in this article, it talks about how the, basically the housing market is on fire. Uh, I'll, I'll read it here. Right. The nation's sizzling hot housing market is a double edged sword. Millions of existing homeowners have gotten a boost as they watch their equity grow. But millions would B, homeowners are struggling to get their feet in the door, especially buyers of color, right? As of Jan excuse me, as of January of this year, the typical U.S. home has gained more than $50,000 in value from the year prior, a jump of almost 20%, all right? So that ties into the whole number of the day. As millions of buyers bid against one another in a market defined by historic low inventory, Right, the Sun Belt, which has been a relatively affordable alternative to the ultra expensive coastal markets, was especially hot, with home values and major markets gaining as much as 45%. Now, why is this a problem? Well, again, government subsidies have been buying mortgages for quite some time. Mortgages have been made easy. Everybody, just about everybody can get a mortgage. Tom, Jane, Dick, and Harry can get a mortgage. And so home prices are going up and it's causing a problem. Now, many would say home price values are good. They're good for some people who are actually in their homes. Um, it, may, it raises an opportunity for me, many to move. But then the question is, well, I've moved now. Home prices are up. I can sell my, sell my home because I have equity in it and get some cash out. The question, though, is presented, where will I move to? Because those home prices have gone up as well. So that's part of the problem. But all right, back to the article. All right, so Zillow's economic research team predicts home values will gain another 20% by year's end. So if we're just doing the math real quick, right? We had 50% last year in some articles we, we've read, right? And then maybe another 20%. So that's 70%. Now, in this article, they're saying that it jumped as much as 20% last year, and we're predicting another 20%. So we are looking at housing prices that are going to be somewhere between 40% and 70% more over the last three years. That's very, very scary. But I want to keep going on to the article. All right. Now, while the good news for home buyers watching the equity grow, millions of Americans who are trying to buy a home for the first time are watching that dream slip further away. That's especially true for black Americans who were hit hard by pandemic related job losses. The black home ownership rate is lower today than it was a decade ago. A big part of the problem is that black Americans typically have lower incomes and less wealth making it more difficult to save for a down payment and they are more likely to have no credit history and be denied a mortgage. Now, we've kind of talked about this before. This isn't something new or fancy that I'm just not covering on my channel. We, I talk about this all the time, but it's becoming more and more of an issue because it's going to hurt more and more people. All right. Now, the typical black household has less than a quarter of wealth of a typical white household, a $3 trillion gap that has widened in the past decade. Housing disparities brought by generations of systemic inequality, such as redlining and disparate credit access, account for nearly 40% of that gap. 
black owned homes are worth about 18% less than white owned homes. Let me read that again. Black owned homes are worth about 18% less than white owned homes. Hmm. Combine all these factors mean black families are less likely to fall further, or, or excuse me, are likely to fall further behind despite unprecedented growth in the real estate market. So economic times are good for real estate. Sadly, black folks are not able to take advantage of this. So a lot of times, you know how we always talk about, we want to catch the next wave. We want to be able to stay on top of the trends. We want to get into, I don't know, the Bitcoins and the cryptocurrencies of the world because we don't want to miss the next wave. But here we are missing the current wave, right? Real estate's always been a thing, will always be a thing. As people always say, they're not building any more real estate. But it would make it makes me believe, right? It's bigger than just missing the trend or missing out. There's something else that is part systemic, right? That's part of the problem with the overall with all the overall system. And there's some other things that we are missing as a community because we haven't made the adjustments to the system to change the system and to change how we are operating to take advantage of some of these opportunities. All right, now. Let me keep going through this. Let me keep going through this. Now, the one thing about this this opinion piece, I think they gave some good ideas, in my opinion, all right? So this one, build, 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 is going to take additional inventory and all types of significantly slow price growth and unlock home ownership for Americans. More than 60% of homes in the United States are single-family detached homes. With many of these neighborhoods created and kept way largely through, excuse me, let me let me read that again, I messed that up. More than 60% of homes in the United States are single family detached homes. With many of those neighborhoods created and kept that way, largely through decades old zoning restrictions. They also skew more white and tend to be more expensive than the broader metro area they're in. So zoning, zoning restrictions, so let's take a minute to, to detach this, I don't just want to blaze over this, glaze over this and miss some of the things. Old zoning restrictions. What are zoning restrictions? They're part of the political process. I keep telling y'all, it's not just enough to get money. We have to also be present in the things that either help us or preclude us from getting money as well. And that's the political process, right? All of these things we keep missing out on a lot of times are due to the political process. And a lot of these cities, especially black dominated cities, it will be very easy for us to at least, at least take over. And if we're thinking about it and we're truly researching and looking at the issues, we can put forth effective policy. Question, if, right, if we are studying, if we are paying attention. So again, you, you gotta do some work here. You gotta do some work here. So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Now, hopefully everybody can see this. All right. Easing zoning rules to allow modest densification in single family neighborhoods would add millions of homes to our choked housing supply. And if something is something and it's something a majority of homeowners and two thirds of black homeowners agree should be allowed, according to Zillow's research. All right, they allow an additional unit. If they allow additional unit of just 10% of single family lots can yield more than 3 million new homes across just 17 metro areas. That's especially important for households of color, which are more likely to live in higher density housing, including condos and townhomes. All right, a couple other, a couple other things they suggested that be re redone, right? Reform the credit system because the way they credit FICO is geared some would say it's kind of biased right i would say it's biased all right and so it said that one of the suggestions was to use rental history because a lot of people have very good rental history right um as a re replacement for typical uh credit uh, metrics that they judge right a lot of times in credit they're looking at uh, mortgages car loans uh, credit cards and a lot of times black folks don't have credit history or have very little credit history, but 
rent could serve as a way to get around that. All right. Help with down payments. That's another thing that they suggested. There are a lot of down payment. There are a lot of down payment programs that are out here. It says there that are over 2000 counties have 10 or more programs available that provide grants or loans to help other down payments and closing costs. All right. But generally, but, but buyers generally aren't aware of the help that's available and they need to be more and it needs to be more. So, all right, that gives me a clue. Maybe I need to do more to get the word out about some buying programs that are out there um, and to, again, spread the word. Because I see a lot of my my real estate people who uh, who rock with me, they talk about home buying programs. So maybe I'll do a show on home buying programs. And then that way it'll be another way for us to get the word out. Now, here's one I thought that was really, really good, right? Especially because there's a lot of bias with real estate agents and there's a lot of bias with home appraisers, right? Both of those people are very key in determining the value of a home, especially the value of homes in black communities. So bias training, let me put this back on the screen, bias training and safeguards. <laughs> Got to give that the horn, right? Bias training and safeguards. Everyone should be able to shop and find a home free from bias, discrimination, and racism. Anyone responsible for real estate license renewal requirements should mandate implicit bias training. I think that's an excellent idea. I would just add on home appraisers as well because they are licensed also. So it says that way industry professionals have the tools they need to ensure they aren't creating barriers for people to access certain communities or opportunities. Similarly, more states should require fair lending training that addresses the effect of bias and lenders should review and update their training to ensure it's addressed. Now, here's another thing that they kind of proposed. They talked about it here. The industry should also embrace remote desktop appraisals, which rely on visual technology such as 3D trainers and digital floor plans rather than an in-person visit to the property that can mitigate bias in the appraisal process. So BIPOC, I hate saying BIPOC, by the way, um, homeowners can tap into their equity more equitably and be protected against discriminatory practices. So I, I, I find this article, it's good, it's good. I do believe some of this stuff is pandering. I've, I've shared that with y'all before. I've talked about that with y'all before. And so, I don't know, but what do y'all think? Tell me what you think about this article. What do you think about some of these solutions down in the comment section? All right. And so as we move forward with uh, our today's programming, let's do this. Let's talk about the affirmation of the day. So today's affirmation of the day is I see so much to be grateful for when I take the time to look. Again, I see so much to be grateful for when I take the time to look. Again, I see so much to be grateful for when I take the time to look. Remember, affirmations are really great. Life and death lies in the power of the tongue. Be mindful of what you say to yourself. Remember, every time you say something to yourself, it's stored in your memory, good or bad. So fill yourself up with some positivity. I love sharing these affirmations. People a lot of times ask me, ask me, Kamari, what affirmations do you say? So I share them with you all during a lot of these sessions, right? So again, I see so much to be grateful for if I take the time to see. Almost like stop and smell the roses, right? It's a lot of the little things in life that can be really, really marvelous if you just take a breath, if you take a moment and look to see what beauty is around you. All right, everybody. So we covered our market rundown, Russian Ukraine crisis, and black families struggling to buy homes in this new economy. So if you enjoyed this, um, share it, like it, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you all being here. I'm always humbled that you're all here. So thank you again, but do me a favor, hit the notification button to let you know every time a video goes live. Until the next time, I'll see you all soon.